نحمده و نسلم و نسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسول النبي الامين المكين الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين الحمد لله رب العالمين اوتي اعظم بمن بيسر سما مدد قبلاء دي مدد كعبا امام مدد قادری امنا رائے آہوت آدم ظنم دل شیخ احمد رضا خان خود بے عالم ظنم سیدی عمر شدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد مسلح کے سرکاری اعلیٰ اعلیٰ حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلح کے احمد رضا خان زندہ باد حفظ نام و سری سال کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی عمر شدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد حامل فیض رضا مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ نبی امی و علیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاۃ وسلام علیہ کے یا سیدی یا سندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیہ کا و صاحب کا یا رحمت للعالمین اور پریز از ڈیوٹو مائٹی اللہ درود ان سلام زفون دموس پرفیکٹ ان اگزوٹو دف اللہ سلیشن سیدنا مولانا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اس بلیسن سالیٹیشن زفون دی انبیاء اکرام اہل بید اتھار صحابہ اکرام خلق راشدین تبعین تبعی تابعین آئیم میں مشتہدین اور جائے کاملی نوردوز و فلو دے پاتم دے لاس دے We thank Almighty Allah for His infinite mercy and for the seal of the Bidah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for affording us the opportunity to come and live to Salat al-Jum'ah and to prostrate His most exalted court. Before we continue, let us direct our hearts and our minds and our thoughts towards the holy and the sanctified court of the Bidah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in doing so, let us collectively recite the Rusharif. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyana wa Alayna Muhammadin حافیت لبنانی و شفاعت بلکل بدا و نور لب صوری و دیا و آدی و صحابی و رکسن دائمنا و دن سرمدہ اللہ با ایز گریس و با ایز ماسی ہیز بلیسٹ اس ویڈ بینگ amongst those who affirm with our hearts and proclaim with our tongues that Allah is one and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his Rasul and thus we are regarded as Muslims thus we are regarded as believers and when Allah Almighty granted us this tawfiq to be Muslims and he blessed us with acknowledging and affirming and accepting that he is one and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his most chosen messenger, Rasul and emissary then with that Allah has given us numerous other zimadaris. A Muslim has numerous responsibilities and it is the duty of the Muslim to fulfill these duties and these responsibilities. The foremost duty of a Muslim is to manifest that which he believes. To reflect that which he believes. So a Muslim believes that Allah is one and Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's Habib, Allah's Nabi, Allah's Rasul. So the Muslim must reflect this. How does he reflect? How does he manifest this from his being? He shows Allah is one by standing in the ibadat of one Allah. He shows Allah is one by standing in the ibadat of one Allah and fulfilling the commands of Allah. And he manifests and reflects from himself the reality that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's Rasul when he practices in accordance with the command of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Amongst the responsibilities that Allah has bestowed upon us, amongst the zimadari that Allah has given us, one great zimadari is the zimadari of amana. One great zimadari is the zimadari of amana, of trust. And we as believers has been, have been entrusted with numerous amana. In the real sense, in the real sense, your parents are an amana. Your parents are an amana. What is it about your parents that are an amana? Your responsibility and your obligation towards them. To parents, their children are an amana. To parents, their children are an amana. They are a trust that Allah has given you. They have been entrusted to you. That you may groom them and guide them so that their iman remains strong. And the discussion is very lengthy. There are numerous amanas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But one amana, one very important amana that we have is called Ishqi Rasul. It is called the love for the beloved Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And an amana is something that you protect with your life. An amana is something that you protect with your life and you regard an amana to be something that has to be protected at all times. And the ishq and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an amana. And when you have been given the responsibility to preserve and protect that ishq Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah has bestowed upon you and I, then we have to take every step that is necessary to protect that amana. And the first step that you take to protect an amana is that you have to keep it safe from those who will ruin it. To keep it safe from those who will ruin it or take it away from you or cause you not to realize the value of what you have. That is the first thing that you have to do. And that is why we always remind one another, stay away from Bad Mazhabs. Stay away from the deviants. Stay away from those who will harm this amana. Because it is an amana means it can be taken away. It can be taken away. When? When you do not value it. Ishke Rasul is something that we should continue making to our that Allah allows it to grow in our hearts. You cannot physically touch it and see it. But it is in your heart. Your wijdan knows it. Your intuition understands that there is Ishqi Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is that ish that makes me stand up and say, Mustafa jane rahmat pe laakho salam. Shama'i bazme hidayat pe laakho salam. It is that ish that draws me towards the Mawlud of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is that ishq that when I look at the green dome and you look at the green dome of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then your eyes become moist with tears and the thoughts of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is an amana, it's a great amana. It is called the love of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And always remember that when you are entrusted with an amana, you become the custodian of that amana. When you are trusted, entrusted with the amana, you become a custodian of that amana. So we need to look at ourselves and see what kind of custodians we are. What kind of custodians we are. When it comes to the ishq of the beloved Rasul and the love of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Almighty Allah has given us, it is our duty to safeguard that muhabbat. It is the safe duty to safeguard that ishq because that muhabbat and that ishq is the soul of everything. It is the soul of everything. Indeed, it is the soul of everything. It is even the soul of the first man and the first human that came on this earth. Abu al-Bashar Sayyiduna Adam ala Nabiina alayhi salatu wasalam. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam is the soul of him as well. That is why Murshid al-Kareem, Huzur Sayyidi Taj al-Shariya, Rahabar al-Tariqat, Hadrat al-Lama, Mufti al-Shah, Imam Akhtar Radha Khan, Al-Qadri Azhari, 
Radi Allah, what does he say? He says, Abu Gil me noor ki pahli kiran. Abu Gil me noor ki pahli kiran. Jaan e Adam, Jaan e Hawa, aap hai. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are the soul of Adam. You are the soul of Hawa. Radi Allah anha. So we have been entrusted from that time, mankind has been entrusted with protecting this valuable gift of the love and the honor and the integrity and the and and and, 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 and the blessed station of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. But unfortunately, people have forgotten how to be Amin. We have forgotten how to be guardians of the amana that we have, especially the amana of our love for the beloved Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to understand how to protect this amana, you have to go back more than 1400 years. You have to go back in the time of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and look at how they protected their deen. Look at how they protected their iman. Look at how they protected the love for the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they were such, they were such custodians of deen. They were such ameens in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to his companions as being aman al-dar. As being ameen. I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example. Sahabi Rasul. Hadrat Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu. Al Sayyidina Abu Ubaida ibn al Jarrah radiallahu anh, is from amongst the Ashara Mubashara. Those ten that were promised Jannah while they were still walking on this earth. Their place was given to them in Jannah. By who? By Muhammadur Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa When the Prophet said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Osman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah, till the end of the narration. Hazrat Huzur Abdul Sallallahu alayhi wa was telling the world. That remember that they are on this earth, but Muhammad stands on the ground and gives Jannah to whom he wills. He stands on this earth and he gives Jannah to whom he wills. So he gave Jannah to them while they were in this world. Amongst them is Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala. About him, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I'm talking about the word amana and amin, so I'm bringing this for you to understand. About him, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there is an amin in every ummah. There is an Ameen in every Ummah. And the Ameen of this Ummah is Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala. And the Ameen of this Ummah is Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala. Now let me tell you, since I said his name, and we are talking about Amana and love, and I've taken the name of Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala. Let me tell you something about him. Let me tell you what was his idea and his ideology. Let me tell you what was his way of thinking. Let me tell you how he understand, understood life. Today, we look down on people because of the color of their skin. I'm being very blunt. If somebody has a darker skin than you, there's a problem. You see it today in communities throughout the world. And this has got no place in the deen of Allah. This racism and this kind of behavior has no place in the deen of Almighty Allah. We cannot say that because I am lighter skinned than the man who is darker skinned is lower than me. If that was the case, then we could not have said Sayyidi Bilal and Sayyiduna Bilal. Our leader is Hazrat Bilal Habshi radiallahu ta'ala. Until he doesn't go into Jannah, none of us can go into Jannah. Eh? It was not about the color of his skin. It was about the radiance of his heart. Which was full of the love of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let me tell you, since we're talking about Amana, and Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah's name came up, who is known as the Ameen of this deen. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah, Hazrat Sayyidina Qatada radiallahu anh, reports that Hazrat Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah made a statement once. And subhanallah, what a beautiful statement. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anh, he made a statement once. What was his statement? He said, it does not matter to me whether the person is white or black. It does not matter to me whether a person is white or black, a free man or a slave, an Arab or a non-Arab. It does not matter to me whether a man is white or black, a free man or a slave, a non-Arab or an Arab. He said, whenever I hear about somebody 
who is more superior than me in piety and virtue. Whenever I hear about somebody who is more superior than me in piety and virtue, then I wish I would have been a portion of his skin. Allah. 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 Whenever I, I don't care if he's black or white or Arab or non-Arab. I don't care, he says, about any of this. But when I hear that he's superior to me because of his piety and virtue, then I wish I were a part of his skin. I were a piece of his skin. Why did he say this? Why did he say this? This is that Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala an, that once people were in the court of Hadrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu an, and Hadrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu an said to those that were present in his court, tell me what would you wish for if you had one wish? Right now what would you wish for if you were allowed to wish for something in this world? And somebody said one of them, one of the companions that were seated in the court of Hadrat Umar radiallahu an, he said I wish that that this house in which we are sitting, this mansion, would be full of gold. I wish that it would be full of gold, so that I may distribute all of it in the way of Allah. Look at why he wished. <laughs> he didn't just wish. Look at why he wished. And Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu said, wish for something else. Wish for something else. And another person sitting in the court of Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu he says, how, how I wish this house were full of pearls and, and, and precious gemstones. How I wish that this house was full of this mansion, was full of, 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 of pearls and precious gemstones like topaz and all the other kinds of gems. He said, so that I may give it khairat in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what they wanted. And then Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu said, wish for something else. Think what else do you desire? And they said, they said, all that we have present there, subhanallah. They said, oh Umar Farooq, we have told you what we wish for and what we desire. And you're going on saying, ask something else. Can you ask us what you, can you tell us what you wish for? Can you tell us in this world now what you wish for? He said, I wish that this mansion was full of people like Abu, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala. I wish that this mansion was full of people like Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu an. What is he telling us? Subhanallah. That don't worry about the wealth. Worry about the one who knows how to value the wealth. Because the Nabi said he's the Amin of this. If you have any wealth of deen, iman, dunya, not about the wealth, is the one who knows how to guard and protect that wealth. From that. The custodian of that. And that Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah radiallahu an, you say, he's saying, that I don't care about the man is black or is white, or whether he's an Arab or a non-Arab, or whether he's any other state. All I want to see is if I hear that he's more superior than me in what? Piety and virtue. What is he teaching us? He's teaching us that you value piety. A person is exalted in the sight of Allah because of his taqwa, because of his deen, not because of his dunya. And something comes to mind. And you know where we learn this? And that I started off by talking about the Aman of Ishka Rasul. We learned this through Ishka Rasul. We learned this through the love. How did they become like this? Because they sat in the court of the Bilal of Rasul. And you know how they used to sit? It is in the hadith that when they used to sit in the court of Rasul, it seemed as if there were birds sitting on their heads. They would not even move. And like how there's a bird, if you move slightly, it will fly away. And that is how they sat in the court of Rasulullah. There was a tire on the head, like there was a bird on their head. Did you think, and I was thinking about why did Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah say that I don't care whether the man is black or white. I don't care whether he has this or that, whether he's an Arab or a non-Arab, etc. All I care about is that he's more superior than me in piety and virtue. And if I find such a person like that, then I wish that I were a part of his skin. Why did he not say anything else? Why did he not say anything else? Why did he say a part of his skin? Did you, can you think about it? He said a part of his skin, a portion of his skin. Because I will be part of his physical body. Because he's superior in piety and virtue. So he'll be superior in performing ibadat in the court of Allah. He'll spend more time in wudu and tahara. He'll spend more time on the musalla. He'll spend more time keeping fast. He'll spend more time making ibadah. And if I am a portion of his skin, then whatever blessing falls upon him would fall upon me as well. Look at how they thought. Look at how they thought. Look at where their minds were. Look at where their hearts were. 
And let's ask ourselves, where are our thoughts? Where are our minds? It is something to think about. The world is passing us by. Time is passing us by. But we have forgotten that we have such great zimadaris. We have such great responsibility. Allah has sent us here as believers. Allah has made us believers and given us great responsibility. If we are not going to fulfill our responsibility in this dunya, what is going to happen to us in the akhirah? What will be the outcome in our graves? We have drowned ourselves, you and I, so much in the pomp and the splendor of this dunya. We have forgotten that above the zameen is something else, beneath the zameen is something else. We have forgotten about it. And these pious personalities have reminded us this. May Allah grant us the tawfiq and khair to understand. May Allah strengthen our love for him and his beloved Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I remember once Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia said something and I'm going to end with this. He said, I read a share that I wrote, a poetry couplet that I wrote. I read it once in the, in the presence of Sarkari Ghusulwat. Huzur Mufti Azam Hind radiallahu anhu. And the share that I wrote, the first misra of that share, the first line of that share is, Ravahe sal sabile ishke sabrwar mere sine mein. Ravahe sal sabile ishke sabrwar mere sine mein. In other words, the fountains and the lakes of love are flowing in my heart. In other words, it's love, no? This is love speaking. And Huzur, she said to me, Huzur Mufti Azim said to me, wait. Instead of he, read ho. Not only is it. In other words, don't say it is. Say, may it always flow. And I realized that Taju Sharia became Taju Sharia through that dua of Sarkari Mufti Azim. When he said ho, then the love is continuously flowing even though he has left this dunya. This is the reflection of his forefather. Sayyidi Allah Hadrat Adim al Barakat radiallahu an. Baade Visal Ishke Nabi kam nahi hua. Baade Visal Ishke Nabi kam nahi nahi hua. Ruhe Raza Huzur pe kurba hai aaj bhi. Ruhe Raza Huzur pe kurba hai aaj bhi. May Allah bless us to understand and give us understanding of deen. Those who are ill in our community, Allah grant them shifai kam and say the aaj. Those that are passed away in Ahlul Sunnah, Allah exalt them in Jannat al Aib. We make special dua, very, very special dua. For Hadrat Allama Maulana Mufti Nizamuddin Sahib from Brown Sharif and his son and other alim as well who passed away in an accident just a few days ago was a giant in knowledge. Uh, Alhamdulillah, whenever I would go for the also of Huzur Sayyidi Sadr Sharia or Huzur Etaj Sharia, I would meet him. He would be one of the guest speakers in this, in this massive program. Um, a very powerful and knowledgeable alim al firm on the Maslak of Allah Hadrat. Uh, he left this dunya in an accident a few days back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalt him in, 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 in the heights of Jannah and, and his son as well. And may Allah grant sabr to their family. And may Allah protect the lives of the ulama haq As Huzur Sayyidi Muhammad Zikabir, Kabir, when he heard about this, Hadith was very short and he had sent out a message. And he said something that this is the time of Kahat al-Rijal. It's become a time of drought of scholars. Because the greats are leaving the world one after the other. So may Allah... Keep us under the shade of the true ulama of the Sunnah and Jama'at and keep us in the shade of those who truly spread the deen of Allah and His beloved Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ma'alayhi wa sallam. Sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, 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 Allah,